QuickJS is taking the world by storm and in this video we look into its meta framework, QuickCity. We will build together a small app that allows users to create and share code snippets and we'll look into all the features that makes QuickCity extremely performant and easy to work with. Let's not waste any more time and jump into it. You can create a new project using this npm create command and you'll end up with the following project structure. QuickCity uses Vite as the package manager and comes with TypeScript support out of the box. One of the main benefits of meta frameworks is the routing support. Inside the routes directory, you will get access to a folder-based router system we'll analyze in detail in a second. We can save our components in the components folder and we'll use the services folder to store any business logic or server calls we might need. The root.esx file is the main entry point into our project and we can use the global.css file to store our styling rules. With the project structure out of the way, let's dive deeper into the routes folder. QuickCity follows a pretty common routing pattern where the folder structure dictates the router path. So, to listen to the user's awesome path for instance, you would end up with the following structure inside your routes directory. Inside each such folder, there are a couple of special files you can define, such as the index.tsx or layout.tsx. While the index will render the HTML page for the client, the layout.tsx file I'm currently editing will allow you to define templates and reusable nested layouts. All our pages will have a shared header component, so we will quickly write the code for that. Note that I'm not getting into a lot of specific details when it comes to the core quick framework, but you can find an overview of the framework linked into the top right corner. So, inside the header, we'll define a logo and a couple of navigation links for our basic workflows. We can use either a specific link component or a direct HTML link to point to a separate page because one of Quick's main features is the option to render pages on the server and then resume them on the client. This is in opposition to the usual single page application approach where navigation inside the app was done by modifying the URL and then rendering the content directly on the client. In the route slash index file, I'm exporting a document head object to define the page title and add some meta information. QuickCity will know to take all this data, combine it with the layout we defined earlier, and then use all this information for the final page rendered. Next, we are exporting a default component which will actually render the main content of the home page. Using the use styles scoped hook, we can easily scope our custom styles defined in the index.css file. There are multiple ways to handle styling in quick apps, but I find that the easiest approach is to have a one-to-one -one match between a component script file and a CSS file. As a quick side note, styling is another topic I will not address here, but you can find some related CSS videos linked in the description. Next, let's jump into the login index file and work on something a bit more interesting. I will be using Supabase Magic Link Login to allow users to authenticate, so we'll need to ask them for their email. Then, depending on the state of the flow, we want to display different visual cues for the loading time and for the send successful state. I am using signals to persist this information as component state, but later we'll revisit this topic and we'll look into stores as well. Anybody involved in front-end development in recent years knows the pain and hassle of handling app state, but it looks like more modern frameworks such as Solid, Svelte or Quick were able to finally nail this down. In the JSX, if the login request was not sent yet, we'll display some labels and an input field to capture the user email. Then, we'll render a login button, which is a custom component we'll create in a second. When the button is clicked, we'll make a request to the Superbase authentication endpoint. Inlining the onclick callback might look a little bit weird, but this is an acceptable approach in Quick since these callback functions will be extracted in separate files and then lazily loaded only on demand. This is one of the main reasons Quick has such great performance. Its core approach is to deliver to the client as little JavaScript as possible and then load additionally necessary bits only when specific events are triggered. This is in complete opposition to most popular front-end frameworks which deliver hundreds of kilobytes of data to the client, completely disregarding any type of network performance performance or time to interactive metrics. Back to the code, after the login request is sent, we'll display a small success message so that the user knows what the next steps are. Let's spend a little bit of time on the button component. This is the type of element that's going to be used all over the application, so flexibility and a good documentation are key in such cases. I'm using a TypeScript interface to define the type of properties our component can receive, which is always encouraged since it's going to help other devs understand the component API and use auto-suggest capabilities. For for now, the button can receive an on-click callback which is a function and an optional loading boolean flag. Inside the JSX, based on the loading state, we'll conditionally add some class names and a disabled attribute. Finally, we can use the special slot component to insert into the template the content passed to the component as children. To sum up the button implementation, this component will render a styled HTML button which can handle on-click events and which is going to display a loading spinner while its loading property is equal to true. Next on our list is the page that allows us 
us to create a new code snippet. Note that we are using a store here, which is a mechanism similar to signals. While signals can mostly work with primitives, stores allow you to save objects as the initial values. Another interesting point here is the no serialized type I'm using for the editor field. Getting back to the resumable comment I mentioned earlier, quick applications are being serialized so that the framework can start rendering on the backend and then continue the process on the front end. However, there are scenarios when specific helper objects don't need to be serialized and passed over. In our example, I'm using the code mirror library to create a code editor and I'm saving a reference to that editor in the store. This is exclusively a front end feature, so there is no need to serialize and move the instance between renders. Since the editor is only used on the front end, I am initializing it in the use client effect hook. The template part is pretty straightforward. I am rendering the editor wrapper and the header and then also adding a text area to allow users to save some details about the code snippet. When the save button is pressed, besides managing the loading state, I am making a call to a save snippet service method we'll work on in a second. Please note that there is no error handling being performed in this example, but in real world scenarios you should always think about situations such as the network failing, validation errors and others. Next, we'll take a quick detour and spend some time working on the snippet service. As already mentioned, I am using Supabase as a backend provider. This allows us to create database tables and easily perform create, read, update or delete operations using a JavaScript SDK. Quick City is a meta framework and, we'll see in a second, is able to listen to HTTP calls and act as a backend API as well. So you'll be able to develop full stack applications using such a framework and the only piece still missing is going to be database support. I am using Supabase here, but you can add to your stack various solutions ranging from SQLite to MongoDB for instance. Back to the code, using the standard fetch API, I am making a post request the snippet endpoint to store the code and the description in the database. Next, I am exposing a get snippet method which will fetch all the information stored in the database. Note that I am also using an abort controller here and linking it to the fetch signal field. We'll get back to this in a minute. Before doing that, let's create some backend endpoints. These are going to use the same routing rules I mentioned earlier, so to listen to the routes endpoint, I am creating an index file in the routes slash snippet folder. The only notable difference between endpoints and page components is that endpoints are simple .ts files instead of .tsx files. There are some intuitive naming conventions we have to follow, so for instance, exporting an onGet method will register a listener to a get call and an onPost method will listen to a post request. Of course, this applies to put, delete and any other HTTP verbs as well. Remember that this code is going to run on a Node.js powered backend server and it is going to behave like any other REST API, listening to incoming requests and returning JSON as a response. The final piece we'll work on is the bits index.tsx file, the page which will render all the code snippets saved in the database. We'll make a get request to the snippets endpoint by calling the use resource hook provided by Quick. This special hook returns a promise like object which can be serialized by the framework. Furthermore, the hook is reactive to state changes and provides a cleanup helper function which can be used to release resources from previous calls. The resource hook can then be paired with the resource component and you'll end up with a powerful context not only listening for your endpoint response but also providing you the necessary tools to handle scenarios such as the loading or the failed state. This goes back to my remark regarding error handling so I find it extremely useful that the library provides tools that force you to think about corner case scenarios as well. When the data is received from the server, we'll simply map each entry to a snippet component which accepts a few parameters and renders the content on the page. As a reminder, the rendering will happen first on the server so all this information can be easily indexable by search engines as well. In this video I didn't go into all the details of building the project but you can find the github repo linked in the description. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.